With over 600 stores in the U.S. alone, Banana Republic is a mainstay at malls across the country. And you probably know it for what it is today, which is basically an upscale version of The Gap. But what if I told you that Banana Republic started as a safari and adventure store? That's right, this is what their stores used to look like. It's got to be one of the strangest transformations in retail history. So how did Banana Republic go from this to this? Well, it all started in 1979 when Mel and Patricia Ziegler got the idea to open a store selling military surplus items. But instead of the camouflage gear typical of army surplus, they scoured the globe for more exotic fare like Burma jackets, large wool overcoats, and pith helmets, the kind of store where adventurers and Indiana Jones types would shop. They opened their first store outside San Francisco and called it Banana Republic Travel and Safari Clothing Company, Banana Republic being a derisive term used to describe corrupt, politically unstable countries. Their store was a big hit, and just four years later, they had multiple stores and a robust catalog business. And that's when The Gap came calling and offered to buy Banana Republic and fund a massive expansion, all while allowing the Zieglers to retain creative control of the store. They jumped at this offer and Banana Republic was on its way to a mall near you. But what separated it from other stores is that they had a fully realized theme. Nothing was half-assed. The stores were decorated with jungle foliage, giant giraffes and elephants, streams, and most memorably, army jeeps made to look like they'd crashed through the storefront. And for a while, things were great. With popular movies like Out of Africa, Romancing the Stone, and the Indiana Jones movies, the early 80s saw a safari chic fashion trend. People were fascinated with far-flung exotic locations, and Banana Republic was the place to shop for it. But everything started going south in 1987 when the stock market crashed. Having to answer to their stockholders and believing that the safari trend was on its way out, Gap decided to pivot the brand. They wanted to expand their products to include luxury items and thought that Banana Republic was the perfect vessel for it. Wanting no part of this, Mel and Patricia Ziegler bailed and left the company they had founded. By 1990, the old Banana Republic was gone. The dirty, rugged stores where Indiana Jones shopped replaced with sleek, modern stores where your boss shops. It's really kind of a shame. You can debate how useful a store devoted to safari and expedition clothing really was, but at least it was fun and different. It had personality, and it stood out from every other store in the mall. I was very young, but I remember going to the mall as a kid and always wanted to stop at Banana Republic. It was just a cool store. How many kids say that about Banana Republic today? The great irony is that the brand has become a drag on Gap's bottom line, with one article saying its biggest problem is a lack of a clear, unique identity. Well, if they're looking for a new identity, they need only look to the past, where they carved out one of the most unique identities in retail history. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and to check out my other videos. And don't forget to leave a comment and hit that like button.